In this update, we're going to be going over my January forecast and what I believe will be a step down process starting off the month of January on the overall milder side, but trending much colder as we get into that second half of January. Let's take a look at the temperature anomalies for the next seven days. We're coming off a very warm December. A lot of these areas across the north have actually experienced their top five warmest Decembers on record. It's only now that we're starting to see the beginning stages as the El Nino gets more pronounced underneath of the subtropical jet stream start to funneling in and some cooler anomalies are starting to show up across the south into the southeast as that Pacific jet will start to relax and the ridging will start to funnel further north starting to retrograde back up into Greenland into Alaska. So for right now, here's your precipitation coming off that cold front that really impacted across the middle of the part of the country around Christmas. That sets the stage for our Christmas blizzard across this area. Now what's left over of that snowstorm is still ringing out some snow showers over the next couple of days across portions of the Ohio Valley. And then further south, it's just all rain, but a dry slot back behind it. And we had a new renewed threat of heavier rains over the next seven days as that El Nino starts to become even more pronounced. So look for above average rains across the Pacific Northwest into California, and this will start filtering in into portions of the desert Southwest. So as we transfer into that second week of January, this is that fourth through that 11th time frame, we're gonna be starting to see that ridging start to even retrograde further north, right? We'll start to see Greenland start to really start to warm up. We'll start to see Alaska start to warm up. That keeps the cold and traps the cold further south underneath, tapping into more of an active subtropical jet stream. And the Climate Prediction Center is already hinting that around that fourth through that tenth time frame, getting more areas starting to go below average. Now, remember, this we're going into the month of January. This is typically your coldest month of the season. So when you're looking at temperatures, already going to be below average across the southern flank from the west coast down to the southern plains into the southeast that is going to be some colder temperatures i wouldn't think they're going to be arctic in nature as of yet especially in that first half but the idea is those ridging starts to become more relaxed over the top and so you'll still be on the colder side, but not nearly as not on the overall warmer side, but you're not nearly as warm as what you were in the month of December. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in to get all my daily content on this channel. When I would love to reach 220,000 subscribers by the end of the month and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content so this forecast is going to be reflective on what's happening into the stratosphere we got to go way up guys we're talking 20 miles up in the stratosphere there we appear on the 10 millibar level we're starting to see the reversal of these zonal winds. And whenever you see something like this, we're starting to get confirmation that we could have a more amplified sudden stratospheric warming event right around that January 5th, 6th time frame as we start to see more than 80% of the members of the EPS guidance starting to see that zonal wind reversal. Whenever something like that happens, you typically get a massive spike up in the Arctic and that polar lobe starts getting displaced and that starts getting detached and start to funneling in. It has to come out of the mid latitudes and get down to the surface and that process could take several weeks. We saw similar events back in 2019 and 2021 of this sudden stratospheric warming event and ironically it happened right around kind of the same time frame 
around late December into that early January timeframe. We had a sudden stratospheric warming event back into that 2019 timeframe where we had a displacement of the polar vortex started to weaken and split into those three lobes. And one of those lobes started to travel southbound, crossing over into the mid, mid latitudes and pummeling in into the Northern hemisphere, finally getting into in the lower 48. Now that process took a while to max out, right? This is what the temperatures kind of look like once that true Arctic air funneled into the lower 48. So it was a step down process before all this took place, but the core of the cold ended up being over a good part of the upper Midwest. And these are actual temperatures on that January 31st, 2019 timeframe were much of these 20, 30, if not 40 degrees below zero. In fact, Illinois picked up the state record, which is still 38 below zero in that time frame. And we also had a similar event in 2021, the same type of event that I think is going to unfold right around that same time frame. Ironically, this is January 5th, folks. This is January 5th coming out of that sudden stratospheric warming event. Now, this one took out a little bit longer to actually fully get amplified and go into the lower 48. These things take a while, but it was a step down process and it really ended up with an historic cold outbreak across the plains right around that February the 6th through that February the 18th time frame. So the likelihood of something going negative is pretty good because we're looking at the teleconnections, right? Let's take you up again, the teleconnections on what may happen coming out of that displacement of one of those polar lobes. So we start to look at the Arctic Oscillation. Again, matches right there, right around that 5th, 6th of January timeframe starts to trend negative. And look, it becomes predominantly negative pretty much for the entire month of January, also aligning with the NAO, which is also predominantly negative. So when you start to see both of those negative at the exact same time, that's going to trap the colder air underneath. Now it's going to be a step down process, right? Because we're coming off a very warm December, but looking, looking at the overall uh, temperature anomalies by the time we head into that, you know, again, that eighth through that 12th time frame, we start to see again, ridging, more ridging over the top with that negative NAO and that negative AO, we start to see that ridging start to retrograde further north over Alaska and over, uh, over Greenland here, trapping the colder air underneath. Now look at these blue anomalies, right? They start to fade as you get further south. That's because we haven't had much of a snowpack in the month of December coming off that very warm uh, December. And the GFS guidance is kind of implying the same way. The EPS and the GFS guidance starts to trend the cold from the Pacific Northwest and eventually funneling in towards the east, especially as we head towards that second second half of January. So this is the step down process. If we look at the EPS guidance on the snow over the next 15 days, it lays starts to rebuilding the groundwork, right? I'm talking about rebuilding because looking at the snowpack, what it is right now, basically atrocious, right? I mean, we are like 17%. We're going coming off a 20 year low on for snowpack on Christmas. It's only because of that Christmas blizzard highlighted over the middle of the country. Now we're about 22%, but many areas look have literally no snow on the ground. So as this colder air comes in, it's going to be modified as it drifts further south. So the first half is like laying the groundwork and rebuilding that process over again, right? So here's where the snow could unfold and dropping that far south as we trend to that first half of January. Now, once we get beyond that, I do feel around that 15th of the month, we'll start to have even more pulses. The, now the true, I think, true Arctic air 
will finally start to start to pummel in into the lower 48. It takes a while to come over the top, come, come, come over the uh, mid latitudes. Remember, this thing technically probably likely doesn't start until around that January 5th time frame and it's about 20 miles up in the atmosphere. So it's gonna be taking a while to come over into the mid latitudes and funneling into the Northern hemisphere, coming into North America and eventually getting into the lower 48. But we start to see that ridging start to become even more amplified over the top, over Greenland, back into Alaska again, that keeps the cold and it traps the cold underneath and with that renewed snowpack across a good part of the lower 48 we're going to start seeing the trend of colder temperatures to be allowed to drop further southbound as that colder air continues to pummel in now these will come in pulses this is going to be pulses of energy that's coming out of the stratosphere coming out of the middle latitudes and coming into the lower 48 so this is the setup around the 21st time frame the larger longer range cfs guidance is already starting to kind of show the the uh the the, the effects of this sudden stratospheric warming event coming out of the Arctic. So, and as we trend towards that 24th time frame, I think then that's when it really starts to deepen. We start getting into that. That'll be like three weeks afterwards of that particular uh, uh, sudden spike in the stratosphere. That by that time we'll have the foundation laid and we'll have that true Arctic air really start to funneling in into the lower 48 and you're likely going to see your coldest anomalies uh into the lower 48 by that time frame then that will also trend the snow line dropping further south as that el nino and the subtropical jet stream gets even more active tapping into that colder air after you've already laid the groundwork around the middle of the country so if you're looking for snow opportunities further south it's going to be a step down process right so we're coming off a very mild december but yes i think the transition into the middle of the month and especially as we head to that third week heading to that last week of january yes the likelihood of this sub the subtropical jet stream drifting all the way down into Mexico by then into the Gulf states is pretty likely and that would trend the opportunities of snowfall further south so it's not out of the question you're likely going to see some of the snows first snows of the season more likely around f further south into the southern plains into the southeast maybe even towards the coast into that last week of january so this will be a step down process and i'll be keeping you well ahead of the storm but i wanted to give you kind of my overall thoughts going forward and how i think january is going to play out so of course i'll be fine-tuning this on daily updates throughout the month of January and going forward. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update, Wire Protect You before and after the storm.